from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. United Launch Alliance presents live Atlas V launch coverage. On board, Sibbers GO-1, the first space-based infrared systems mission for the United States Air Force. Ready to go for launch. Roger, go for launch. T-minus three, two, one. Atlas engine ignition. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy Rocket. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus 9 minutes, 20 seconds, and counting. Launch countdown operations are continuing, and the team is not working any issues at this time. The window for today's launch opens at 2.10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and will remain open for 40 minutes, closing at 2.50 p.m. Eastern. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Mission Control Center in the Atlas Space Flight Operations Center. I'm Don Spencer, and I'll be your commentator for today's mission. Later in the broadcast, you'll hear the voice of Marty Malinowski as he provides launch vehicle ascent data throughout the flight. And also later in the broadcast, I'll be joined by United States Air Force Lieutenant Natasha Del Rosario from the U.S. Air Force Infrared Space Systems Directorate. Lieutenant Del Rosario and I will discuss the SIBRS program and the incredible capability it will bring to our nation. A planned 10-minute built-in hold is coming up at T-minus 4 minutes. This hold allows launch conductor Doug LeBeau and his team some time to address any last-minute tasks. However, at this point, we remain on schedule for launch at 2.10 p.m. Eastern Time. And as I mentioned earlier, Atlas V is launching the first dedicated satellite in the space-based infrared system. SIBRS, one of the nation's highest priority space programs, is designed to provide global, persistent, and taskable infrared surveillance capabilities to meet 21st century demands in four national security mission areas. Missile warning, missile defense, technical intelligence, and battle space awareness. The system architecture consists of legacy defense support program satellites in geostationary orbit, hosted sensor payloads in highly elliptical orbit, or HEO, dedicated SIBRS geosynchronous Earth-orbiting geosatellites, and the associated ground infrastructure to receive, process, and deliver the infrared information to key decision makers. The SIBRS team is led by the Infrared Space Systems Directorate at the U.S. Air Force Space and Missile Systems Center. Lockheed Martin is the prime contractor with Northrop Grumman as the payload integrator. Air Force Space Command operates the DSP and SIBRS system. And just moments ago, the launch team received a final weather briefing and was told the weather is within the launch commit criteria for today's launch. Current weather conditions are as follows. The probability of violating launch constraints are 10 percent. The ground winds are in the upper teens uh, and not a factor today. Upper level winds are within constraint and the temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit here at Cape Canaveral. Beautiful day for a launch with clear skies and no weather uh, that appears at this time to be uh, threatening our liftoff, which is planned for, again, 2.10 p.m. Eastern Time. So we are a go for launch with no issues in work. Uh, and again, we have a 40-minute launch window available, which closes at 2.50 p.m. Eastern Time. This afternoon's flight is the 26th Atlas V since the inaugural flight in August 2002. Today's mission is flying in the 401 configuration, which is powered by the RD-180 main engine and a single-engine Centaur upper stage. The spacecraft is encapsulated within a 4-meter diameter payload fairing. Today's mission is the culmination of many years of hard work by the combined Air Force and ULA teams. On April 20th, the Sibbers GO-1 satellite was encapsulated in the 4-meter diameter payload fairing. The encapsulated payload fairing was transported to Cape Canaveral and mated to the Atlas V booster on April 26th. The fully integrated Atlas V on its mobile launch platform was rolled to the pad at Space Launch Complex 41 on Thursday at about 10 a.m. Eastern Time. A track mobile is used to transport the Atlas V and its mobile launch platform 
to the launch pad. For those of you watching the live launch broadcast, you can see here the Atlas V vehicle on Thursday morning stacked on its mobile launch platform, rolling from the vertical integration facility about 1,800 feet south of Space Launch Complex 41. The Atlas V rocket stands 188 feet tall, or about 19 stories, and it weighs 756,300 pounds, fully fueled at liftoff, and produces 860,300 pounds of thrust at liftoff. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus 4 minutes. 17 seconds and counting. Preparations for this afternoon's launch are continuing. Again, no issues in work and good weather as we continue to count down. In just a few seconds, the launch team will enter a 10-minute built-in hold to address any last-minute tasks, but at this point, the team is not working any issues and liftoff is scheduled for 2.10 p.m. Eastern. And we've just entered the planned 10-minute built-in hold. The animation we'll see after liftoff is referred to as SDK, or Satellite Toolkit. SDK uses telemetry data to track the flight beyond the range of ground-based cameras. SDK is a three-dimensional representation of the launch vehicle's trip into space. While the launch team completes its final preparations, let's take a closer look at today's flight. The following video incorporates the animation that I just described. The following profile details the important events of this mission using approximate times. The Atlas V rocket will launch the first space-based infrared system satellite for the United States Air Force. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-minus five, four, four three, two, one. The RD-180 engine roars to life and lift off. The Atlas RD-180 main engine ignites to lift the vehicle away from the pad. Shortly after liftoff, Atlas begins its initial pitch yaw and roll maneuvers to attain the proper ascent profile and minimize aerodynamic loads. The Atlas V reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound, at 81 seconds. At 91 seconds, the vehicle experiences maximum dynamic pressure. Approaching booster engine cutoff, the Atlas V is burning propellant at a rate of 1,600 pounds per second, traveling at approximately 16,000 miles per hour, and located 62 miles in altitude and 146 miles downrange. Booster engine cutoff occurs approximately four minutes after liftoff. Six seconds after booster engine cutoff, the booster stage is jettisoned. The first Centaur main engine start takes place 10 seconds after booster separation. The payload fairing is jettisoned approximately four and a half minutes into the flight. Cutoff of the Centaur main engine follows an 11 minute burn. The mission now enters a nearly nine minute coast phase. At just over 24 minutes into the flight, the Centaur main engine is started for a second and final burn. This burn will last nearly four minutes. Following the second Centaur main engine cutoff, the mission enters the final coast phase. This coast phase will last nearly 15 minutes. At 43 minutes, 19 seconds, Centaur releases Sivers G01 for the United States Air Force. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus four minutes and holding. And we are at, uh, L count is at 10 minutes, 36 seconds. So we expect to begin polling in just uh, about just three and a half minutes from now. This afternoon's flight is the 50th launch since the formation of the United Launch Alliance in December 2006. Together with our Air Force, NRO, NASA, and commercial partners, 
ULA has reliably delivered science and exploration missions that expand our knowledge of the universe, commercial satellites that improve imaging and communications, and critical national security payloads that improve and protect life on Earth, including a recent string of six national security missions launched in just seven months. This is Atlas Mission Control, a T-minus four minutes and holding. We are just two minutes away from the polling event. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-minus four minutes and holding. Launch conductor Doug LeBeau will be polling the team in just a few moments for the final go to resume the countdown. 28 launch managers and engineers are polled for their readiness status to proceed with the launch. This will be the final status check before launch for all launch vehicle systems, including the vehicle's electrical systems, hydraulics, propulsion systems, pneumatics, flight control, and propellants. The team will verify that the ground systems, including the computer-controlled launch system, telemetry, and propellant transfer systems are ready for launch, and the team will verify that Eastern Range operations and the space vehicle are ready for launch. Some of the final processing steps prior to launch include completing propellant topping of the Atlas and Centaur stages and securing vent valves of both stages. The team will switch the vehicle from ground facility power to internal battery power and they'll uh, verify that the pad water deluge system is ready for liftoff and they'll conduct final checks of the vehicle's propulsion systems and propellants to verify their readiness for launch. Let's listen in as Doug LeBeau performs the final polling of the team for the final go for launch. Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems, propulsion, go. Hydraulics, go. Pneumatics, go. LO2, go. Water, Go. Centaur systems, propulsion. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. LH2. Go. As gas. Go. Electrical systems, airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. Instrumentation. Go. Com. Go. GCQ. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Redline monitor. Go. Quality. Go. OSM. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Range, weather, and final clear to launch. Go. MD, request permission to launch. This is MD, you have permission to launch. LC, this LD, you have request, you have permission to launch. Roger. This is Atlas Mission Control, a T minus four minutes and holding. And we are approximately, we are two minutes away from picking up the countdown. Polling is complete. The team is given the go for launch for the Sibers GO1 mission at 2.10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 18.10 Greenwich Mean Time. Again, we'll be picking up the countdown in 1 minute 47 seconds. From T minus 4 minutes until launch, you'll be listening to the launch conductor and his team performing the final steps in the countdown procedure. At T minus 3 minutes, the team will secure Atlas LO2 topping. At T minus two minutes, the team will transfer the Atlas and Centaur stages from ground facility power to their own internal battery power. At T minus one minute fifty-eight seconds, the team will secure 